the post topical steroid withdrawal healed video. 97% healed, I would say. Still definitely using the tools, still have little baby symptoms, a little bit of dry skin here and there. Um, but we did it. We did it. <laughs> Only took a year. We did it. <laughs> Hey, what's up in this video? I'm going to take you through all of the different steps, tools, diets that I tried for healing topical steroid withdrawal. So my experience of topical steroid withdrawal happened in two huge waves and I attacked those situations completely differently. So I'm going to tell the story of what happened in the first wave and then what happened in the second wave and the different tools that I used each time. The first wave, I didn't actually use that many tools and the second wave, I tried a ton of things. So the story about the first wave is going to give you insight into into my experience with topical steroid withdrawal, into how and why it started, and what was happening on a physical, emotional, and spiritual level. And the second part of the story, the second wave of it, really goes into different tools and modalities and everything that I used there. So there was way more things that I tried to throw at it the second time versus the first time. I think both parts of the story are very informative. So let's get into it. You are dealing with topical steroid withdrawal. First, I just want to let you know that I see you. I know how uncomfortable, unbearable, itchy, painful, draining it can be and it gets better. So the thing with topical steroid withdrawal is basically no matter what, you will heal. That's a thing. Your body just needs to relearn its own systems for basically how it manages cortisol because what happens with topical steroid cream is we are putting fake steroids and fake hormones into our body which completely dysregulates our system. Then when you stop using the topical steroids, your body produces a withdrawal response which might mean it feels like your eczema is coming back or your eczema is spreading over different areas of your body body or your psoriasis and you think, oh my God, now I need to put the cream here. Now I need to put the cream here. Now I need to put the cream here when really it's just your body withdrawing. But then we keep using it and keep using it and keep using it. And steroids are only meant to be used for a short period of time, but that education isn't very well taught to clients and it ends up with people with eczema and other symptoms overusing steroids and then having a withdrawal experience, which is no fun. So, so we're going to do the short version of my story with a little bit of background so you can know how long I was using steroids, what I was using them for, etc., how they affected my body. And then we're going to go through into everything I learned along the way so that you have a plethora of different tools and experiences that you can try on yourself. I will say there is not one thing that I think healed my topical steroid withdrawal. Like I said before, this is something that will heal over time. Do I believe that I cut my healing time down significantly? Absolutely, absolutely I do. Because with the amount of, of chemicals and steroids that my body has been exposed to, it could have been a much longer journey. So to get into my story, first of all, my mom was using steroids while I was in the womb with her. She has had psoriasis for most of her adult life since she was about 19 years old and she has been using them. So um, to no fault of her own, that would have affected me in the womb. And actually, if we really wanna get into that, since when we are in womb, we, we as women already have our eggs in us, then technically I was in my grandma's womb. So think about that. Your grandmother, when your mom is in her womb, also has you as an egg already in, which means that the way that our genetics and are affected is from our grandma, her environment, her experience, her stress, her emotions during her pregnancy, then our mom's entire life, plus into our pregnancy and then being born, right? So there's all of these factors that contribute to how our body um, gets sick and, and heals and who we are and everything. It's just, it's just absolutely mind blowing, which is why no one's healing story is identical. And while I was dealing with topical steroid withdrawal and eczema, there was other things going on. So I have been exposed to pretty high levels of farm chemicals because that was an industry that I worked in when I was younger as well. Of course, we wore masks, we wore safety gear, but at the same time, I'm handling chemicals at a very concentrated volume that get mixed into huge amounts of water. And these are just uh, chemicals that get sprayed on the field to help with the uh, weeds and the whatever the bugs etc and they get digested through the plant and they have to be digested through before the plant can be harvested anyway regardless of that I had pretty high exposure to these chemicals plus I was probably dealing with some heavy metal stuff I'm obsessed with fish and fish are pretty high in heavy metals plus heavy metals are something that you're gonna have to research but can be passed down also through uh, your mom to you so anyway those are those are toxic as well Basically, my body was completely overloaded with toxins from unique experiences, plus just our general life experience. We are exposed now to so many insane 
chemicals and toxins that we never would have been before from everything in our cosmetics to our laundry stuff, our house cleaning stuff, um, to driving on the road on a bike and breathing in whatever's coming out of the car in front of you. Just, it just really never ends. So not only that, but the food that we're eating is now also becoming less and less real food, right? It's more highly processed to be more convenient, more shelf stable, et cetera. And so for a body that used to be pretty much only exposed to natural things, like our ancestors, I mean, now we are just inundated with chemical exposure from our food, from our environment. So if our food was perfectly clean and the environment was dirty, maybe we'd be able to balance it out but it's pretty much chaos as you probably know. Is that gonna change? Probably not. Is the system that is creating that looking out for the general health of the public? Probably not. So what do we need to do about it? We need to educate ourselves and really take it all into our own control, which is exhausting, um, it requires investment, and I totally feel you, it's completely overwhelming. But here I am having this experience at 25 years old where my body is completely run down, my immune system is shot, and my skin is just going absolutely nuts. So it was almost exactly a year ago, I'm recording this in the middle of May, it was about the end of April, one year ago, where I was at a pretty good place in my business where I was making consistent income, feeling good about it, but I knew I was getting close to entrepreneurial burnout. So I was in the digital marketing space, I had a pretty, couple pretty successful programs teaching uh, coaches and freelancers how to build sustainable and scalable businesses, and I was teaching people how to be social media managers, and it was going great and I was having fun, uh, but I knew that I was inching towards burnout. So I decided to invest some money in working with a naturopathic doctor who's also a medical intuitive. And I basically told my body like, I'm ready to heal. So let's take a break and let's see what's up. And it was like, as soon as I put that intention out and finally stopped working so intensely, uh, my body just said, okay, let us show you what's wrong. And one of the reasons I believe that happened at the same time was one, my intention was there, but second, when I was in this work hustle mode for five years of working really, really long days, working on the weekends to build my business while I was you know, graduating from university at the start and also working a job as well, my body was in overdrive all the time. I was flooding my own system with adrenaline and cortisol, drinking a lot of coffee at the time, and just constantly in a state of stress, which allowed me to keep going. And if you've ever had the experience where you go on vacation and you get there and you relax, and then all of a sudden the next day or two days in you're sick, you know how people always get sick on vacation? It's because finally you've let your system relax. All of those stress chemicals are no longer being consistently flooded into our system and you get sick because your body's like, oh my God, finally, I can, I can have a chance to heal. So I need to create mucus, I need to create a fever, I need to create a stomach ache, and I need to get all of this stress, and I was gonna swear, get all of this out of my body, right? I'm already rambling, but I promise there's little gems all throughout this story. So one, this is why we get sick when we go on vacation. So I set this intention to heal, and at the same time, I stopped using these steroid creams. And the reason that I was using steroid cream was I had a little, little baby patch of eczema here and here on my arm. And I've been living in Bali for the last two and a half years, and it is very, very humid here. And so as I would sit and work on my laptop all day, I would get really sweaty here, and then it would get itchy, and then I would get red bumps, and so I'd put a little steroid cream. And I was using it very inconsistently, probably once every three days, the smallest amount, because something in me knew, like steroids aren't very good for you, but I was like, oh, I'm only using 0.1% hydrocortisone something and like that can't be that much which makes no sense because even though 1% or 0.1 is a small number doesn't mean it's not strong in the steroid scale it doesn't mean I wasn't still using steroids way more than I should have been and in a really inconsistent way so I stopped using the steroids sure enough my body started to show me what was wrong and I started to get a rash all over my body it became super itchy around my neck, specifically my throat, um, also here, the tops of my legs, and it started to spread down my arms. So the naturopathic doctor that I was working with suggested that I go on the candida diet and also start taking some supplements. So I started on the candida diet, which was also really hard. I remember literally crying over the fact that I would be so restricted in food. This is for a couple of reasons. One, I love, uh, I love the experience of food. I knew it was gonna be hard. And two, I've had some history with disordered eating behaviors where I know when I'm restricted, it leads to a binge cycle and it leads to a lot of um, mental shame around making the wrong food choices. And so I knew that this was gonna be hard. And she said to me, she's like, when you're ready, you will do it. But just so you know, this is probably gonna take a year. And thinking about having to be on such a strict diet for a year was just so overwhelming to me. But 
as literally day by day passed, my skin was getting worse and worse and I just knew, okay, I need to really intervene here. So I need to do something about this. So I basically started eating paleo. It wasn't exactly the candida diet, but it was, it was paleo. If you want to look up the candida diet, you can, it is mostly use, used to tackle yeast overgrowth in the gut, which is something that she also thought that I um, might be dealing with. So I spent the summer of last year, the Canadian summer on a paleo diet for the most part. And I was also taking a couple supplements. One is called Podarco and the other one was dandelion root. So they're both very, very gentle supplements. They're both natural supplements. They are just a plant basically dried and ground up and they're both liver supportive supplements. So because what I was dealing with without actually knowing or doing any tests was definitely liver based, um, gut based and, and skin, but it's never really your skin, right? It's actually your liver and your gut that are affected. Uh, liver was a really big one to tackle. So that's what I did. And over the summer, my symptoms got much, much worse. I was just so dry head to toe. I'll put some photos here. My skin was dry, peeling, bleeding. My neck was bleeding. I had to travel internationally from Bali back to Canada, not because I was sick, but because it was in the plan anyway. And I was wearing this like bandana. I had a bandage over my throat. Pretty sure people thought I looked like some bandit traveling or like a super, super broke backpacker just like trying to get home because I just looked like such a wreck and went through the summer in, for lack of a better words, a dark night of the soul. I cannot tell this story about healing my physical body without talking about spirituality. So like I mentioned, the first person that I hired to work with was a trained naturopathic doctor and also a medical intuitive. So when you hear the words medical intuitive, you know that part of her own methodology is actually using her intuition, guidance, connected to, connecting the spirit guides to also guide me as well. So while we would talk about diet and supplements, she would also do an oracle card reading for me or tarot card reading for me. And we would talk about um, whatever, my physical symptoms, and then we would go do an exercise of releasing anger by throwing rocks over the edge of a cliff. So there was definitely, um, it was healing on a body and emotional and spiritual level. And one of the first books she had me read is called The Anatomy of the Spirit by Carolyn Miss. Caroline Miss is also a medical intuitive and what she explains is in her own study she has learned that different symptoms are related to specific things. That book gave me a lot of insight not necessarily into what I was dealing with specifically but just how the emotional body and the physical body are so obviously linked together. And an example that's more easy to understand is if you're having digestive issues, maybe your mind isn't digesting all of the information. So if you are being totally overwhelmed with all the information because you are working all day and then you're listening to a podcast and you're never giving yourself time to just rest, breathe, daydream, then perhaps your stomach is also going to have trouble digesting because the information isn't gonna get digested. So that's one that makes sense, right? There's other ones that are a bit more random, like if you fall and scrape your knee, it can mean that you need to get out of the living situation that you're in. Those ones are a little bit harder to connect the dots, but it's all super, super interesting. So basically while I was spending these months in Canada, I was really, really evaluating my own psyche, my childhood experiences, my belief systems, my emotions, why I was sick in the way that I was, because not everyone gets topical steroid withdrawal when they stop. In the research, the very, very limited research, it says about 30% of people get it. I would guess that it's higher, but it depends. Some people have the experience of having the withdrawal symptoms for years. Some people only have it for a couple months. It depends how long you're using it and how well your body is equipped to also deal with the withdrawal. So that whole summer of healing, which my physical focus was paleo diet. And just before you get stuck on that, I will tell you that in my second wave, I switched to a vegan diet. So we're gonna get there. This whole summer was focused on rest, deep, deep rest. I was sober burnt out. And this is also how burnout manifested in my body. Maybe if I hadn't been so burnt out, if my adrenals weren't so shot, I wouldn't have had the withdrawal symptoms so intensely. It's literally impossible to know. So last summer for me was very quiet. I went off social media during that time. I spent a lot of time evaluating my entrepreneurship journey in my business. I was feeling pretty unaligned with with what I was creating in the digital marketing space. Not that it wasn't a great offer, it actually really was. And I do know so much about that, but it just didn't feel like it was really my calling anymore. Did I know what my next thing was? Absolutely not, which was absolutely terrifying. I spent a lot of time napping, taking long walks alone. Um, my socializing was like once a week with a couple girlfriends, which was super fun and a lot of lake time and just really healing. So obviously I was very uncomfortable. I was super dry, super itchy, super tired. And it was a period of lots of fear and deep reflection. 
So it wasn't only the experience of topical steroid withdrawal, it was all of this mental and uh, spiritual stuff going on as well, which maybe you can relate to or maybe not. So my symptoms definitely peaked around July and then calmed down, down, down. So every week my skin was changing and it wasn't always getting better. And this is something that I really wanna to emphasize too, that someone would ask me, is your skin getting better? And my response was, my skin is changing. So my neck, for example, was getting better, but my arms were getting worse. And then my arms would be getting different, but my legs would start to have a rash on them. And then the rash would be, uh, it would go from like wet to more dry, peeling, uh, it would be more flat and then it would be more raised and it was just always changing. So if this is something that you're going through and you're feeling this, the change is good, right? If you're noticing something is shifting, that's good. It might not always be going in the downward direction, let's say like towards zero, um, but, ch but change is good. So fast forward to the end of summer, I'm looking good, I'm feeling good. I was in a wedding at the start of September, felt really good in that, felt good about how I looked in the photos of my skin, even though it was a bit bleached and stuff, or it was like white where it was peeling off, but then tan where it wasn't. And then I traveled, so I went to Greece and I went to Berlin, and during that time I could feel that the symptoms were slowly coming back and I was starting to get very disheartened because not only was I still unsure of the direction that my career was going, but I didn't know what I was going to do if that was happening again and I didn't understand why it would. So I got back to Bali in October and by the middle of November my throat and neck skin was starting to act up again. By the end of December it was full blown. So what happened between that time? When I started noticing the symptoms coming back in October, I had been following this woman named Ezgi who is really, really big on fasting. I was also friends, or I am friends, with my friend Adrian who was connected to her. And so I kind of had my eye on this idea of fasting in order to heal. And in my travels between Berlin and coming back to Bali, I had to do a seven day hotel quarantine. And I had this brilliant idea that this would be the perfect time to do a 48 hour water fast because I could simply deny food and there was no way for me to get it. So there was no fridge tempting me, there was no leaving the house to go get something from a restaurant. It was just if I didn't say yes to food, I wasn't getting food. So I thought it was a brilliant idea. I made a YouTube video about it. You can watch it here, 48 hour water fast. During that fast, I looked and felt super healthy. It was just kind of like a self experiment to see how it would feel to only drink water for 48 hours to give myself a digestive break, which is something that I'd never done before in my entire life, which is pretty crazy if you think about it, right? Pretty much the maximum amount of time we go without food is 16 hours and that might be a stretch, right? If you're intermittent fasting or doing that. If not, it might be closer to eight or 12. So I did that and that was great. Then I got back to Bali after the hotel quarantine and my symptoms were getting worse. So I wanted to work with Ezgi specifically to do a 10 day parasite detox. At this point, I wasn't a thousand percent sure that what I had was topical steroid withdrawal. And actually during the first wave in the summer, I didn't really think that that's what was going on. I thought I just had an overload of toxins in my body, burnout. My mom even mentioned something about topical steroid withdrawal and I kind of looked into it and I was like, yeah, maybe that's also happening, but that doesn't feel like the, the main issue. So it wasn't really on my radar. So this is why I have kind of had parasites in my mind because when I remember as an adult, my eczema getting bad, it was, was, it was when I was traveling in Southeast Asia in 2017 and I thought, ah, oh, maybe I picked up a parasite that my gut obviously isn't used to because it's in a different part of the world that I'm from and it's just been keeping me sick. So I did this 10 day parasite detox, which is, in general, you don't need to have parasites to have huge benefits from this detox, but it basically is a juice fast. So you're still consuming calories and carbohydrates, but it gives your digestive system a really big break. And for a number of reasons, it, um, it allows you to excrete parasites. It is also paired with enemas, which you can look that up if you don't know what it is. Enemas were a big part of my healing journey and we're gonna get into that. So as I was doing this detox, my skin was getting worse and worse and worse. And I knew in my heart that it was a good sign because it meant that my body was continuing to flush out everything that it didn't need. In the end, I don't think I released parasites like other people did. I didn't have these long parasites coming out of my body, which some people actually do, but you can watch the video that I did about it to get more details. So doing that 10 days definitely made my symptoms increase. Again, if you're doing something that is detoxifying or you're intervening in some way and you get a negative symptom, it's probably a good sign, right? If you change your diet and you're getting uh, stomach aches even, or having um, diarrhea, or having skin breakout, if you changed it in a generally healthy direction, it's probably just a detox mechanism happening. So just be strong and try not to to go back on what, you, what you're doing because you feel like it's making you more sick. 
So after that, that kicked off the next wave by December 31st, which was like six weeks later, my skin was full blown. And this time in the second wave, it also affected around my eyes. And I thought in the summer when I was at home, like this is the worst thing that can happen. Like my body just like looks terrible. No, it got much worse. My skin was much worse. And basically a big lesson in that was learning to surrender everything. I surrendered my appearance. I surrendered being able to work or even knowing what my work was. I surrendered being able to work out. I surrendered um, having food choices basically. And wow, is that a emotional struggle of letting go of control because there was nothing that I could do except take care of myself and put one foot in front of the other and nourish my body in the best way that I could and just take it day by day trusting that even though it was getting worse and worse that in the end it was actually going to get better so that kicked off the second wave and when that was happening what was the tools that were really important to me were fasting and enemas and eating a raw close to raw vegan diet so after i came off the parasite cleanse i kept eating as many fruits as possible and if you know anything about the candida diet and paleo but the candida diet specifically, fruits are basically completely out. So this was very conflicting information. I will also say that I have a degree in human nutritional science. I am a certified health coach and I've been in the nutrition space for a long time. And actually from my own human experience, from all my research, paleo felt like a really good healthy diet to me, especially when you're doing paleo properly with grass fed, um, grass fed meats and low on inflammatory grains, high in vegetables and healthy fats, right? That, that sounds really good to me. I'm not telling anyone how they should eat, but that sounded good. So that was something I felt good about. Now I'm over here working with someone else who's like, nope, we actually want to go super low fat, super low protein, high in fruits, and let that heal your body. And so of course I had some resistance. I thought, what about the sugars of fruits and da da da, and like not enough protein in your body needs protein to heal, especially when there's open wounds. And I would say I was wrong. And so what I learned about healing is like, actually we need to get out of the way. Our body is completely equipped to heal itself when we get out of the way. And this is where fasting became so important because if we look at animals, as soon as they feel sick, they fast. They just don't wanna put anything else in the body so that the body can do what it needs to do. So as the weeks went on, I kept on a very high fruit diet. I would also have really big salads and then maybe one cooked meal closer to the end of the day. That's what felt good to me. It's not necessarily best practice, but that's what I could mentally handle. And because my immune system was so low through all of this, I kept getting other infections. So I had an ear infection. I had sort of like a cough and a throat infection. I got COVID again. I had a UTI and all sorts of other things, which was again, so draining and exhausting. But I decided instead of doing anything else, I would just use fast to heal this. So I started to do some dry fasting as well. I did two 36 hour dry fasts. I did a couple just other 36 hour coconut water fasts. I didn't do another water fast, but it was just a tool for me. The way that I did them was pretty sporadic. I had to know when my body was ready. And I even started a fast once and then stopped it because I just mentally, I just wasn't ready. So for someone dealing with topical steroid withdrawal, I would definitely recommend it because it's just giving your body a break that it really, really needs and it is powerful in the healing phase. So if fasting is something that you are interested in bringing into your healing journey, I would definitely check out Esgi's 10 day parasite cleanse. Again, it doesn't matter if you're dealing with parasites or not, if you're dealing with a skin issue, I think this would be a good place to start. Another one would be the medical mediums 28 day cleanse. It's a big time investment. It's a money investment, it takes a lot of preparation, it takes a lot of boundaries and knowing that you're gonna have to say no to stuff. But if you're watching this video and you're like ready to do anything, you definitely wanna be nourishing your body in a really, really powerful way. So that's definitely something I could suggest. While I was doing the parasite cleanse also, I started using something called the vodka cleanse, which was also created by Esgi and it is like a skin cleanse that has vodka as one of the main ingredients. It's not the only ingredient and it really helps to clean out your pores. So my body apparently decided its favorite way to detox was to through my skin. So I knew that all of this stuff was coming out through my skin. So that was something that I used as well. Just in case you're interested, it's super crazy. The results, like you can shower with soap and then you do this vodka cleanse and it comes out super, super, <laughs> super dirty on the white cloth. So not something that I think helped actually with topical steroid withdrawal at all, but it helps with the detox 
process. So my three main tools for most of December, January, and February were eating vegan, eating a lot of raw foods and eating a lot of fruit, and doing enemas almost every single day. So an enema is when you put liquid up into your colon and you allow it to help pull out excess waste and mucus that is stuck in there. Super fun, right? So in the 10 day parasite detox, there are lemon enemas, which you definitely want to follow the instructions for and coffee enemas as well. So again, something you want to follow the instructions for and find, um, find a good coffee brand and someone that's going to take you through how to do these enemas. But that's something that I was doing every single day. The benefits of coffee enemas are that they increase a enzyme in your liver. I'm pretty sure it's called glutathione about 700%, which is helpful in detoxification pathways. So as weird as it sounds, enemas became a very meditative experience for me because you have to be very focused and present with your body. If you are putting a liter of fluid into your intestines, it wants to come out. So you need to be very present with your body. I would literally play meditation music and just be present with my body and tell my body, I am here with you. I am healing with you. We are healing. Like I were, you know, I got you. We're doing this together. And it was really powerful actually. And it became a time of prayer and meditation. And I really, really, really loved the enemas. They made me feel good. And I would definitely recommend them as part of your detoxification tool set. Plus it doesn't really require actually anything external. They're very inexpensive to do and you can do them at home. So if you have any questions about that, leave a comment. I've always like considered doing a video strictly about enemas and how to do them so that you feel comfortable because of course it seems like un uncomfortable in the beginning. So that's definitely something I would consider doing. If it is interesting to you, let me know. Another thing that I did consistently that felt really good, and again, I'm not saying that I have one thing that's gonna fix it all, but these are the things that I did, was start my day with hot water and lemon. And then the second thing that I would have would be celery juice. So this is something that the medical medium suggests as a very powerful way to rid your body of viruses and bacteria. And my goal was to really, really clean to the best of my ability, my liver, and then move into a gut healing phase, which is what I'm in now. So my first, section in hindsight is like healing with fruits and fasting and detoxing the liver and getting out of the way so the liver can heal itself. And then the second phase is rebuilding and gut healing, which is what I'm in now. And the experience I was having while I was doing all of these things, which sounds so fun, I know, was obsessively picking at my skin. It was just like huge flakes and scabs were coming off of me and I could not leave them alone. It was being so exhausted, being in a beautiful place like Bali and being scared to go outside because this, the air would hurt my skin. There's another symptom that happens when you have topical steroid withdrawal and red skin syndrome, which is like, uh, they call it zingers, but basically it's like the nerve endings are so fresh and close to the skin that it feels like someone is putting needles into your skin at all times. That was super fun. And there was basically not much I could put on my skin for relief. So some of the things I tried were coconut oil, which felt good, but then it became too thick. I tried another little product called Lu Lucas's Paw Paw, which is like super uh, common in Australia, which is why it's here in Bali, which also felt good, but was also pretty thick. So it would literally peel the skin off of it. And eventually I just landed on olive oil. And that was the only thing that I put on my skin for months and still now it's pretty much the only thing that I put on my skin or coconut oil feels okay now because there's not dead skin peeling off of me. Obviously during this whole thing every day is an emotional freaking roller coaster. You can wake up feeling good and not feeling super itchy and then by 11 a.m. it's unbearable and you are crying because you're so frustrated and then the evening comes around and the the streets are getting quiet and the sun is setting and you're like, okay, it's okay, I'm gonna be okay. And then you can't even sleep because you're so itchy. Actually, I never had the experience of not being able to sleep because of being itchy, but I know that lots of people do. So it occurred to me that I was basically spending four to six hours a day just thinking about my skin. Whether it was literally sitting there, lying there, touching my skin, getting interrupted in what I was doing to think about my skin and what I know about let's say the law of attraction for lack of a better term, but energy is that whatever we focus on definitely persists. So if I'm giving all this attention and all of this awareness to my rash and like, you know, just thinking about it all the time, of course it's going to be there. If I'm memorizing in my head every inch of my skin and how itchy it is, of course it's going to be there, you know? So then I had this idea, okay, I need to give less attention to this. And I knew that I could give less attention to it because if I would go for a massage, for example, or be on a call that I was really present, I wouldn't even touch my skin for the whole hour. So that was definitely a tactic was to be like, one, call it the rash or like this rash versus my rash, because then I'm 
energetically taking ownership. Like this is me. I am, you know, the girl with topical steroid withdrawal. I have this, this is mine. And it was just like, no, this is just happening to me currently. This is just part of my existence and I really tried to separate myself from it. So it was at that point that I started to look into other tools because my, my main thing was that I really wanted to heal only with food. There's absolutely zero way I was ever gonna use steroids to help control this at this point. Went back to the drawing board, went back into the topical steroid withdrawal research and I found cryotherapy. And at this point I wanted relief pretty bad. And so that sounded like it would feel very good because Cryotherapy is being in a very, very, very cold air chamber for a short amount of time, around three minutes, but seriously, like a, a negative 100 degrees Celsius cold. And I was so hot all the time. For one, I live in a very hot place where it's like 38 degrees Celsius, but also there was so much fire and heat and inflammation in my body that being cold felt really good. So I saw that a spa center called the Astana nearby where I live in Bali had a unlimited cryo week discount code available. And I was like, this is perfect. I, this is a sign, I'm gonna do this. So I invested in that. I paid for a place in Uluwatu for a week and I went down there and I did 15 cryotherapy sessions in seven days, I'm pretty sure, which was super fun. And a couple good things about it is it gave me purpose. So I was basically at a point where I wasn't really working at all. I had almost nothing in my schedule. I had no motivation. So having to go to these appointments twice a day, gave me purpose, which felt really good. Um, it was fun because it was like a physical challenge. Basically, you the way it was set up there was you would go into the first chamber, which was minus 10 degrees to kind of just cool off your body. And if you had any sweat, it would kind of like dry that off of you. And then you go into the second chamber, which I think was minus 60 for 30 seconds. And then you go into the third one for three minutes. And it is just a mental test every single time. And sometimes I'd get in there and I'd be like, okay, two minutes is enough. You know, it's okay if we do two. And then I would hear them say two minutes and I would just like push on. And I tried so many different tactics for how to stay in. Like, was it better to move? Was it better to dance? Was it better to count? Was it better with music on or music off? For me, it was actually music off because I thought the music that they had was super cheesy and it would just start to annoy me. But it was a very interesting physical challenge. So do I think cryotherapy was helpful for topical steroid withdrawal? Actually, yes. So the symptom alleviations that I noticed were less redness in my skin for sure. Less redness around my eyes, less redness on my neck. And then also the skin was more flat. So if this is something you're deal with, dealing with in real time, you might notice that you have thicker scabs and skin area where you like can't even feel that you're touching it because the skin is so thick and scabby and then areas where it's dry um, and itchy still and maybe flaky but you can actually feel your fingers on your skin so it flattened things out do i think if i kept going it would keep getting better maybe yes and maybe no but for the investment it wasn't something that i was like yes i need to keep signing up and yes i need to keep doing this i felt like i got relief i got a new experience i got to feel cold in a really nice way and and those are the benefits, but I was definitely ready to um, maybe look for something else. So that was the first non-food intervention other than the enemas. And also meditation is another non-food intervention that I was using, which I haven't spoken to too much because I didn't have a meditation system. I just used meditations on Insight Timer that I felt called to. Sometimes it was around anxiety, sometimes it was around um, gratitude, uh, sadness, or healing, specifically healing my body. And then I used the Joe Dispenza ones a couple times, but I didn't get super, super stuck on them. They're pretty long, they're 45 minutes, but I do think that they're super powerful. So then I was introduced to something called Healy. And if you've heard of Healy's, they are this mm, frequency device that's pretty small and you basically attach these cords to your wrist and based on the symptoms that you're dealing with, it will put a certain frequency into your body. And because we are energetic beings and we operate in different frequencies, like our liver is at a frequency, our whatever fingernails are at a frequency, everything is, this table is, the computer is, it all is, this is able to manipulate the frequencies in your body. Everything is manipulating the frequencies in our body. I'm also not a Healy expert but my friend lent me hers. So I used that for about a week and also felt like I noticed small changes in that, which were just giving me a, an excuse to meditate uh, for a long time, which always feels good. Definitely feeling like calm and relieved after noticing, what else did I really notice? Like the machine also tells you which one it thinks is best for you. Instead of choosing the liver one over and over, maybe it suggests that I use a hormone one. So it kind of gave me a little bit of insight onto what it thought was wrong with my body and I enjoyed it, I wasn't addicted to it. I didn't feel like, oh, I need to buy this, uh, buy one of these after, um, but I did think about it a long time because I feel like it's just an, a powerful tool to have in your toolkit, and it's something that I still am considering investing in just as an ongoing, um, ongoing 
wellness device, I guess, to have for lack of a better word. That was just my experience with Healy. Might it help you? Definitely something to look into. I also wanna throw in here that the bigger interventions kind of came at the end. And one thing that I probably would have done sooner would have been to get actual testing done to check some blood markers and also an alpha thermo test, which we're gonna talk about. So just consider getting testing done. The next thing I did was something called a Zytoscan. And this also operates on a frequency and measuring the energetic, energetic field of your body. Basically all I had to do was put my hand on a machine and it showed what was in balance and what was out of balance. And the Zytoscan, the way she used it anyway, is connected to essential oils. So what it would do is it would measure 176 markers and then it would tell you which ones were out of range, so which ones were red and which ones were green, and then based on that, kind of give you a prescription for essential oils. So I had 76 out or something out of 130, I don't know, it was pretty high, but there was one essential oil blend called Hope from Young Living that was suggested that it could affect 40 of them. And then there was like another essential oil that could affect 12 of them and another essential oil that could affect seven. And I was like, you know what? Just give me the hope one. That's all I feel comfortable with right now. I'm not like super convinced. So let's just do that. So I invested in the hope essential oil, which is about a hundred dollars for a little 15 millimeter thing. And what I needed to do with that was start breathing it in. So I would just put it on my wrist a couple times a day and start breathing like 10 deep breaths into my hands. Again, whenever you incorporate anything like this that allows you to stop and slow down and breathe, you're always gonna feel good from that. But hope was something that like my brain kept going back to. So I wouldn't forget to use it, for example, if that makes sense, it would actually occur to me to use it. And I feel like with some supplements or things where you don't feel good after, it just doesn't occur to you to use it. So that was something that I consistently still use now as well. So that's what I got out of the Zytoscan. Still, my symptoms were pretty intense. I was pretty uncomfortable and I wanted to try more things, more things. So the functional medicine practitioner that I started working with then, this is the third practitioner that I worked with. So I worked with a naturopathic doctor and medical intuitive last year for that summer and then our time ended together. She was amazing. She was, she was amazing and she took me on such a profound spiritual journey as well. And now I call her my spiritual mentor because that's actually what she is. I worked with her, felt very, very good about our time together. It just naturally ended as I was getting better. And then I worked with Ezgi through the detox, um, bringing in fasting, enemas, and detoxing foods. And then I started working with this functional medicine practitioner who is Australian. And she suggested, <laughs> She suggested I do something called blood ozone. So getting my blood cleaned with ozone, which means you go into a clinic and they put your blood through a machine and clean it with ozone and then it goes back into your body. There's different ways to do this. The one that I did was definitely the highest level and I wish I knew the different words. I think one is called like E2 or something. One of them, they kind of like take the blood out of your body, they clean it and they put it back in. This was not that, that is uh, a little bit different. This functional medicine practitioner didn't recommend that. This was where it kind of like stays in a continuous loop, if that makes sense, uh, which was a very big experience for me. So I'm not a huge fan of needles, definitely not IVs. I was pretty scared when I got there. I'm also in a foreign country. I couldn't understand what they were saying. Although the doctor was super, super kind. The nurses, I just couldn't really communicate with them. They couldn't find a vein to put it in. Uh, it took about six tries to get it in and I was very emotional. Finally, they get it going and it takes about 90 minutes. You have to lie there relatively still for 90 minutes. And during this time, I was just crying and crying and crying and it wasn't painful anymore. And it occurred to me finally when I started asking myself, why am I crying? Like I wasn't, I wasn't bawling. I was just tears, like just tears and tears and tears and tears. And I started to ask myself, what are the thoughts that are running in my head right now? Why am I still so sad when actually everything's fine? I'm not in pain. And it was that I just felt so so sad and so alone and the thoughts that were going in my head were like why am i alone all the time why is this happening to me again why why am i isolated like it was really these thoughts of like feeling so alone and when i actually considered reality it was like my family has been super supportive and caring around this the community that i have in bali has been also amazing my roommate krista literally checked in and cheered me on every single day i I w I'm not alone, right? I'm not alone. And it, I realized I had been choosing this narrative so long that I need to be alone and I need to do things alone. And what I was realizing during this experience was that I really am not alone. I am totally supported, totally loved. Even that doctor stayed an extra hour to just talk to me and calm me down. The All of the nurses cared so much. One of them came and like wiped the tears from my eyes. Of course, I have so many people that love me and the loneliness that I was choosing was because I was choosing to put this wall in front of me 
that said, I am a lone wolf and I feel good about that. And on some level, I am very capable on my own. I am very independent. I feel good about it, but I realized that the lack of connection that I was craving was, was my own doing. So it was like this crazy sort of spiritual experience while my blood was being cleaned of viruses and waste and bacteria, which is super interesting because it's like there was, um, there was literally like shadow and darkness and, and bacteria and virus being extracted from my body. And at the same time I was having this, this emotional release. So this is just another sort of like spiritual, emotional, physical body experience that I had during this healing. And when I went back to the functional medicine practitioner and told her that story, she said, I'm not the first person that that has happened to, which is even more interesting. So I had my blood cleaned. This is what came out the other side of it. It wasn't the worst that I'd seen. The doctor showed me some photos of people that have way more fat. I don't really know anything else about it other than this is what it looked like. I went back two weeks later, had it cleaned again, and then it came out much, much cleaner. There was just sort of this extra liquid in there um, and they told me it was much cleaner. Again, there's a bit of a language barrier, but I could physically see that it was cleaner. So I felt good about it. So right after I did the first round of that blood cleaning, I also started something called the Amazing Liver and Gallbladder Cleanse. It's from a book and basically the cleanse itself only takes uh, about 24 hours. I paired it with a three day coconut water fast after and colonics every single day. So enemas are when you do the whole liquid thing at home, you can do it by yourself. A colonic is a little bit different. It's always done in the clinic. They put even more liquid into the, into the body. And in my experience, it was also more effective. So we're going to get into it, but basically the liver and gallbladder cleanse itself requires drinking a little bit of a fast, then drinking olive oil and Epsom salt, which opens the pathways in your liver and gallbladder and allows you to release stones that are in there. And those are just packed toxin, chemical body waste that sits in our liver for our whole life and can make us very, very sick. So I did this, like I said, I paired it with three days of a coconut water fast. And during the coconut water fast days, I was drinking this fiber solution, which helped me to not feel so hungry. And I was doing a colonic every single day. So I did the liver and gallbladder flush. Then the next morning I went for a colonic, only drank coconut water that day, went for a colonic again, only drank coconut water and went again. The colonic experience was very interesting. I think it was more effective, but I prefer doing an enema at home. You have to watch the video to see about see more about that. So about seven to 10 days after the liver and gallbladder flush, which was also about seven to 10 days after the blood cleaning, I noticed a huge improvement in my symptoms. And when I went to the doctor and told her, the functional medicine practitioner and said, Hey, I think that liver flush was super effective. She was convinced that the blood cleaning was actually what did it. So it's really hard to say when I was doing the colonics along with the liver flush, I felt literal poison leaving my body. It was very, very powerful. So at this point in the video, I want to, say like the two things that I think were actually the most powerful were the blood cleaning and that liver flush. The liver flush, it is recommended to do one month, month after month after month for about six months. I haven't done it again since to be honest and it's been two months. It's probably something I should do soon, but it was intense and uncomfortable and gross. And so it's hard to motivate yourself to do it again, especially when the symptoms aren't there, but definitely uh, something to look into. So the book takes you through everything. You should probably read the book or at least work with a functional medicine practitioner, naturopathic doctor to do that flush, but I would definitely, definitely recommend it. And again, I have a video for it so you can watch that as well. It was around that same time that I started taking two new liver supplements. So at this point I had been on no supplements for about six months. And the two supplements that I started taking are called neem and moringa. They're two separate supplements with one ingredient each neem moringa. And I feel like I felt really good with them. And I've been taking that daily six pills each. I know that's like a very vague amount, but that, that's what I'll tell you. And definitely talk to any practitioner that you are working with other things that I did. Whoops, I am inserting another clip here. The alpha thermoscan. This is something that I had never heard about before, but basically what happens is you go into a room with a practitioner and they use a thermometer device to check the temperature of different points on your body, about a hundred different points. And then you stand in cold air, the air conditioning for about 10 minutes and get quite cold and then they do it again. And based on those two tests, I guess overlaid with each other or the contrast, they can start to see where there's inflammation in the body because 
inflammation produces heat. So what I got out of that test was the awareness of where there is inflammation in my body that wasn't even directly related to my skin. So basically it's indicating stuck virus, bacteria, inflammation, buildup, etc. The main things that stuck out on mine were that I had inflammation here, some abnormal tissue actually around my breasts, inflammation in my right kidney, and that my teeth were super, super clean. <laughs> so what the functional medicine practitioner said when she was reviewing it was, oh my gosh, I've never seen someone with, with such clean teeth. It's really common that there is actually bacteria caught in and around our teeth, which actually make us very, very sick. That's something I never dove too far into, but if you've ever had a root canal, then that might be something worth looking into because it's very common for them to have low grade infection and to make you really sick. The reason I think my teeth and mouth had no inflammation in them is because I have been coconut oil pulling very consistently. So if you don't know what coconut oil pulling is, you just take some um, cold pressed extra virgin coconut oil, swish it around in your mouth about a tablespoon, for about 10 minutes and then you wanna spit it out either into the toilet or the garbage can because if you spit it into the sink and your pipes are cold, it can solidify. So that's what I think caused that. Then based on the results that I got, I had to start with some interventions. So for the nasal passage that had inflammation, bacteria, and virus in it, I got this little tool, which is kind of like a diffuser. Um, it plugs in or you can put batteries in it. So right now I don't have batteries, I just plug it in. And it basically creates a mist that you can breathe in. And so what I put in here is something called colloidal silver. Colloidal silver is a very powerful natural antibacteria and antiviral product. So I would put just a little bit in here and then breathe for five minutes. I sometimes also added the hope essential oil that I was talking about before because I needed to be using it anyway. So that was a really nice way to include that. For the tissue around my breast, she recommended that I use something called sacred frankincense oil. Um, just keeping in mind, this practitioner, her main thing isn't essential oils, but she does use them as a, as a tool. This is definitely one of the pricier ones. I think it was over $100 as well. And she told me to be quite liberal with applying this maybe 10 drops even once or twice a day. What I noticed actually is quite a big skin reaction after doing that for a while. So I started to get a similar rash that I had all over my body also here, which made me wonder if the oil was a little bit too intense. So I stopped using it for about the last week and things have chilled out on the external part of my skin. But then I wonder if there is bacteria here or a virus or inflammation, is it just coming out my skin like everything else does? These are the things you learn about your body when you get this inflamed and sick. Anyway, this morning after about a 10 day break, I decided I was just gonna dilute it in a little bit of olive oil and then apply it that way. So we'll see how that goes. And the last red flag was some inflammation in my kidney, which I totally wasn't surprised about. I've had quite a few UTIs and sometimes UTIs can work their way up into the kidney and cause damage. So I have pretty consistent pain, although I have been also looking into high oxalate and I started taking citrine calcium citrate, which has been helpful and that's somewhere else in this video as well. So the alpha thermal scan I thought was super powerful because you can really see where your body's inflamed and some things might be very surprising to you, but that's one that I definitely need to retest. There wasn't anything necessarily around my liver or gut, um, but what we were looking for wasn't necessarily to do with topical steroid withdrawal. It was just to see if there's maybe heavy metals in my body, which also kind of came up as a yes. Based on what the doctor said, I didn't fully understand how she was gathering that from the chart. And so again, the answer is just to detox and detox and detox. I also started getting lymphatic drainage massages. So from some functional medicine perspectives, if you are, if we are doing detox protocol and dumping toxins into our blood and into our intestines, but the lymphatic system also can't carry and clean it makes it a bit ineffective. So I went to a Balinese trained healer and he did a lymphatic drainage massage with me. It was quite painful. And then I was set to see him again the next week. And the next week was the head trainer of this guy. And when the head trainer started to massage my body, he said, okay, what we're gonna be working on is your physical body and your trauma body and your emotions. And I will tell you, I have never in my life been in so much pain as this. And I've broken my arm, I've had my wisdom teeth out, I've had my tonsils out, I've had, I've been in a bad ATV accident. This was wildly painful. And if you were to walk by the room that I was in while I was getting this lymphatic massage, you would probably think someone was giving birth. I was crying, I was screaming, I was swearing, I was trying to pull myself off the table and he literally like pulled me back. He, he knew, he was, he was doing what he needed to do while being a good practitioner, but wow. And I realized that what was happening was physical pain. He knew exactly where in my body the most pain was, 
but also emotional pain because even in the breaks, I just felt so exhausted. I felt so much grief. I felt so much despair and it was just so many emotions also leaving my body. So that was super powerful. He worked basically only on the right side of my body. Most of my chronic pain is in my right shoulder. If you're into energy work and, and emotions and whatever, you can psychoanalyze that in whatever way you want. And that's exactly where he went first. The first one was an experience that I will never forget, the amount of pain. And then the second one with him was probably 30% of what that was. It just felt like a painful sport massage, basically. And then the fourth one, we got a little tender in the head and neck, but it was okay, and I will actually see him again pretty soon. I don't know if I would necessarily say that that directly affected my skin, but it definitely is an important healing experience to get into the tissues of the body. I'm sure it created some detoxification. Actually, now that I say it, I remember feeling like tired after for sure. Um, also sick, a little bit nauseous, and a bit of digestion stuff too, because it is like just bringing oxygen and water into different areas of your body that it hasn't been, and also flushing everything, right? So. All of that needs to be cleared out. Definitely effective. Wouldn't be something I would have done in the height of my symptoms because it would have been way, way, way too painful for him to touch my skin and like just not, just wasn't an option. All right, we're almost at the end of the list, the things and the tools, and I'm gonna give you a recap as well. So just to give a little more clarity, it's not like I was necessarily doing these things one at a time. They're kind of all happening in flow together. So I had the blood cleaning and then I did the liver cleanse and then I was still eating um, definitely like high fruit plants, everything vegan, uh, raw meals, all of that good stuff, drinking lots of juices, celery juice, lemon juice. And then I was having the lymphatic massages and this was all happening at once. Also meditating, also taking care of my body in the best way that I could, all of it's happening at once. So another part of this experience for me while detoxing was having the sensation of a UTI like all the time. And I don't know if that's unique to me. If someone else is also having this, I'd be super, super curious. So UTI stands for urinary tract infection. If you are a woman, I feel like you've probably experienced this. If you're a man, maybe not. Basically it burns when you pee and it's very, very uncomfortable. So I thought that I had a UTI, which is a bacterial infection and I was not about to take antibiotics. Absolutely, absolutely no for me at this point. When I have an infection, I treat it with food and fasting, right? Um, but this sensation just like kept happening. It didn't seem to matter how hydrated I was, whatever. I thought it was related to what I was eating maybe and I just couldn't really shake it. So the functional medicine practice practitioner suggested that I used copaiba in my water, which is a essential oil. So I was doing that and I think it was definitely making a difference and it was helping take the pain, let's say, or the discomfort from about 70% down to 20%. And then somehow, some way in the internet, I got onto this idea that I might have high oxalate. So oxalate can, oxalates can be found in foods like beets and spinach. And if you consume too much, basically they can turn into kidney stones because your body isn't uh, flushing them out in the right way. Sorry, I'm not really explaining this well. One of the solutions, one of the natural solutions is to start taking calcium citrate specifically as well as magnesium to help clear out the excess oxalates in your body and help dissolve kidney stones. So I couldn't find the proper magnesium here in Bali. It's a bit hard to find supplements, but I did find calcium citrate and I started taking that twice a day and that has helped with that a lot. I don't even need to take it every day, but I basically don't have the symptoms anymore at all. And I don't know if I was basically passing like little baby kidney stones constantly. Um, I wasn't really eating a ton of beets and spinach and those are one of the highest foods, but I definitely have not really been eating them now. I don't know if anyone else would have this pee burning sensation from detoxing or topical steroid withdrawal, if there's any way it's connected, but I was having a very uncomfortable experience and seemingly calcium citrate solved the problem. So that feels super good. The final thing that I've done most recently was a second round of the 10 day parasite detox. So in November, that really kicked everything off again for me in my second wave, the symptoms were coming. I did the 10 day cleanse, they increased. It just got, went crazy from there. So now that I was feeling really good, my symptoms were basically gone. Definitely no one could visibly see them even though I can still feel. I definitely have dry patches and I'm still itchy. I would say there's about 5% of symptoms left uh, externally and probably internally as well. I wanted to end sort of this chapter because it feels like the end for me with the same cleanse. I didn't do the full 10 days. I basically cut off the outside days, which are like the easiest ones and went straight into a more intense 
uh, part of the fast with the enemas and everything and I felt super good doing it. I got what I needed out of it. I included a longer dry fast in it and just kind of customized it to what I needed. Um, and that just felt really good. It didn't necessarily change anything. It just reminded me of these powerful tools I have, reminded me of how light I feel when I'm doing a uh, fast with enemas basically, reminded me of how amazing you know fruits are and juices and how nourishing and vitamin dense they are when it's purely fresh. And that just felt awesome for me. So these are definitely tools that I want to continue to use. Like I said, the liver cleanse is probably something that I could do pretty soon. And as far as diet goes, I actually started introducing meat about a month ago now. So yeah, it was about a month ago when I started eating a little bit of fish and then even introducing a little bit of red meat. I think I've had red meat twice since then. I did have my blood tested and I was low on B vitamins, which is common when you go vegan. It's also common to be low on iron. It wasn't interesting to me to get a vitamin B injection. I would rather actually ingest a really high quality meat. So that is what I went for. I don't even, I haven't even really been eating red meat that much in the last years and years. Um, so it's not whatever. It doesn't, doesn't matter. But I have started introducing animal products and I'm just trying to feel out how they feel for me. I have a, an interesting opinion about eggs. If you listen to the medical medium, he really thinks that eggs are quite poisonous for our body. Sometimes I crave them, sometimes I want nothing to do with them. So I'm just trying to intuitively listen to my body and listen to what my body wants. It usually tells me what it wants and I really have to learn, okay, is this what I'm craving or is this what my body actually wants? So that's an ongoing test. I know now that after all of this detoxing, I crave sugar way, 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 way less. Like I used to not, definitely not be able to leave like a dessert in the fridge or anything. Um, and if I had like chocolate or whatever, I would just eat it. And now I forget that those things are even there. I throw out food when I'm done with it. I don't feel like I yeah, need to eat this junk food. When I do, I am pretty quickly reminded how sick fried foods make me feel now from really, really not eating it. So that has been definitely a benefit of all of this, plus learning to get to know my body better. Another thing that I think could be super helpful would be sharing with you how much money roughly I've spent investing in different health interventions along this journey because it definitely has been an investment. So first of all, when I started working with the medical intuitive and the naturopathic doctor, I invested $4,000 in working with her for six months and that was amazing. The blood cleaning was about 250 US dollars per session and I did that twice. I also paid for an extra blood analysis while I was there, which was an extra $100. The lymphatic drainage massages were approximately $30 each, keeping in mind that I'm in Bali, so some things are quite a bit more affordable. The cryotherapy that I did was around $200, and that's because I got the unlimited week and it was on a deal, so cryotherapy is another one that's a little bit expensive as well. I've spent about $400 on essential oils and the tools to use them with, like the diffuser and the diffuser that puts them in the air. I spent about $100 on colloidal silver, between using it on my skin, breathing it in, even drinking it. So I've used both the liquid form, which I showed you here, and one that's more in uh, gel. The Alpha Thermo scan was $300. The Zyto scan was $20. I did one raindrop therapy session, which was around $80. And the functional medicine practitioner that I've been working with, I actually have only paid $200 to her, and she's been super helpful. And I think I spent around $450 to $500 on supplements over the last year. So that included the Podarco and everything that was at the start of the video, and then also the Neem and Moringa that I am taking now, and the calcium citrate. I think it's a, maybe like 500 to 600. And on top of all of those things, of course, investing in really, really high quality food. So that's something that I've kind of had to fight with my own brain about because I love a good food deal. And I just had to remind myself that my body and my health is seriously the most important thing. So of course I should always just be buying the highest quality thing. And unfortunately now, the way that our food system is globally, it's getting harder and harder to find something that is pure and healthy and clean and whole because it's so easy to find something that is more convenient and quick, but generally that food is filled with baked sugar and seed oils, which is only doing detrimental things to our body. So definitely I invest in that. Uh, I had celery juice every day for a couple months. I've been drinking bone broth regularly now, which I uh, pay for someone else to make and just eating high quality food. So that pretty much sums it up. I know it can be very disappointing to hear that there was not one thing that sort of fixed me and maybe this sounds like a very long complicated story but I'm going to summarize it for you so that you can actually take action. So if I could talk to myself before at the beginning of all of this I would have went straight into stronger detoxing and fasting. However when I say that 
when you throw your body into an intense detox, you can get quite sick. So if I was in a position of trying to go to a nine to five job, I would have had to quit. I was so sick and so exhausted and I would have had to take some sort of leave. Luckily, I had set myself up from my own business where I had saved enough money that I could basically take this year off and just work a little bit here and there. I had some really good like launches during the months that I was feeling okay and so I was covered in, in that way. But just to alert you that um, detox can be quite intense and exhausting for your body. However, what I would have done was doing a detox right away with juice only, basically a juice detox, including colonics. So I thought it was more powerful for me to get a colonic versus doing the enemas at home and I wish that I had done that sooner. So definitely doing that, definitely getting the blood clean and definitely doing the liver cleanse. Those were the things that felt most powerful to me top tier, blood cleaning, liver cleanse, detox, and fasting. So basically you could do that all within a month, starting with a blood cleanse even, and then moving into a detoxification diet and doing the colonics and the liver cleanse somewhere in there. If someone wants to leave a comment because that feels confusing, please let me know and maybe I'll type it out a little bit better. Second level is the mental and emotional stuff. So I did so much emotional clearing, getting to know the emotions in my body. For me, skin, um, and what I've learned, skin is linked to fire, fire is linked to anger, and I had to look at all of the anger that I was suppressing, which is a whole nother video that we could talk about. So that second layer was like the emotional stuff, like uh, meditation, emotional release, journaling, feeling all the feelings that came up as I was doing this, and then I don't know if there's a third layer, but that's where I would start. Uh, my brain is absolutely mush from talking for this long. I just wanna check my notes here and see if there's anything. Basically the whole experience was confusing, exhausting, it completely ran my life. It made me infuriated with the medical system and the dermatology system because if you look at the research, dermatologists are basically denying that this is even real when there's many, many people on YouTube making videos about it, let alone all the people that are experiencing it alone. Um, there's so little education on the harmful side effects of topical steroids which if you're this far, you probably agree with me, but it just was such a big experience, such a big learning experience. And all to say, our body doesn't make mistakes. It's always talking to us and always communicating with us and it's always asking us for help. So if you're experiencing any type of chronic illness symptom or any type of symptom at all, it's not that you are broken on some genetic or DNA level, right? The body doesn't make mistakes, it just talks to us. All of this healing has required a lot of discipline, discipline that I didn't even know that I had, and I was not 100% every single day. You know, I was not 100% strict on this diet. I was 100% vegan, but I wasn't 100% clean or organic or, or whatever, or eating like all these raw, like I, slipped up all the time. It was a game in my head all the time. Um, even coffee was something that I also removed over the course of the year and I probably went back to coffee like three or four times, sometimes for just one day, sometimes for three days at a time, sometimes for a week at a time. And I'm actually drinking coffee again in a way that I feel is more healthy anyway, that doesn't matter. But I wasn't 100%, okay? So you don't have to be 100%, you just have to give your best every day, give yourself as much grace and compassion and patience as you can as you go through this. And ultimately, I'm just sending you so much love and encouragement, and I know how exhausting it is to find a practitioner that can support you and that understands it. And even in the people that I've worked with, no one was like, yes, I've worked with this exact thing, except as you probably had the best idea about it, the detoxification and the parasite cleanse. So she'll be linked below, um, but she is on mat leave, so she'll be a little bit busy, but you can definitely invest in her parasite detox, uh, which is, less than $100, it will take you through everything. So that is all from me for now. Thank you again for listening. Any questions, I'm happy to expand on in the comment box. And if um, it makes sense to make a follow-up video, I will, but I really wanted to make this video to kind of close this section of videos on my channel because this channel is not about topical steroid withdrawal and eczema and being unwell. It's actually about personal development, mindset, um, spirituality and all of that stuff, which is what I coach on. So that's what the rest of the videos will be about. And some other videos like that are already on my channel, but this just closes out this playlist, this section. And um, now I feel like you have all the information you need. Yes, that is it. This is the end for real. Bye. Talk to you soon. Mwah.